Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I help beginner through professional level artists reduce stress while mastering animal art. Picking up where we left off last week on the Pet Portrait Commission Process series, I'm going to be talking to you about how to price your custom pet portraits. Okay guys, let's get started. All right, so if you'd like to improve your pet portraits while also reducing stress, I have an online animal art masterclass created for artists of all levels and all backgrounds. And this is an ongoing class that you can join at any time. Here I share my color and technique secrets in my 12 step pet portrait painting process. All right, so let's dive into this topic, how to price your custom pet portraits. Now I can guarantee if you're looking to accept commissions or you already have, you've researched this topic quite a bit and you've probably found a hundred different artists with a hundred different answers on this topic. And you might be thinking a lot of these creatives don't know what they're talking about or they're just beating around the bush. Well, guess what? Here's why. You're trying to quantify creativity. You're trying to consider your tangibles and your intangible factors here. That's why this is such a hard topic to explain. And that's also why so many artists struggle to price their work. So what I'm gonna tell you in this video is I'm truly not trying to confuse you more, but the answer to this question is that you have to find your personal pricing sweet spot. So to help you find that, I'm gonna go over the factors that affect your prices, no matter what medium you're working with. And I'll also go over how not to price your pet portraits. The first factor you want to consider is the art market. The price of art greatly depends upon supply and demand. If your custom art is in high demand, but there's only you providing it, then you can raise your prices pretty high. Art professionals also play a role in this pricing, like dealers and gallery owners and museums. They help to create this demand for artwork by promoting artists and their work. The reputation of these more established artists help to determine which art is good and which artist might be the next Picasso. What this also does is it helps to set the values of artworks expected to appreciate in value over time. This is why it's so important for us artists to keep up with what's trending in the art market because that's what's in high demand and selling fast. So along with the market and your reputation, your experience level will also affect your prices. We see this framed as in painting years instead of just months. So an artist that's only been painting for five months should not have the same prices as say an artist that has been painting for 15 years. This is why professional artists raise their prices each year, sometimes multiple times a year because of the experience they've gained. Another factor is the complexity of your artwork. If you create custom pet portraits that looks almost as real as a photo, then you must charge a pretty penny. That's a very complex, very time consuming commission. And that level of detail and time should be accounted for in your price. And that leads me to materials. If you use an expensive medium or you use expensive packaging supplies, or even if you personally deliver your custom pet portraits to the client, you must also account this in your price. Another factor is your labor, the amount of time you put in to creating your custom pet portraits. Now this can vary on your experience and your medium. Say you're using oil paint. Oil paint takes a long time to dry, so your process is probably gonna take a little while, especially because you're not gonna hand a wet painting to the customer. And as you gain an experience, you'll likely speed up in your process. It'll just be, you'll just be more efficient. Now be careful about this one because you definitely don't want to undercharge and overwork yourself so you lead to burnout, but you also don't want to overprice a smaller pet portrait that say took you way longer because one day it just didn't click for you and compared to a larger pet portrait that you did really fast. Something to be aware of, especially if you want to do this part-time and especially full-time, is that our creativity can fluctuate from time to time. Some days creating art just flows and everything just comes together naturally. 
and then other days a tiny small less complex painting might be so hard for us to complete. This is why I'm not a fan of solely basing my price around my material costs and my labor. All right, so to further help you decide on the right price for your custom pet portraits, let's talk about what not to do. If you want to stay in business, you must not undercharge. This will lead to burnout and also give customers the impression that you provide poor quality art or that you don't value your work. You also definitely don't want to overcharge because as you gain an experience and your reputation grows, you must raise your prices to accommodate that. You also don't want to raise your prices too fast, but incrementally, and I recommend year by year, as you continue to improve your art and set goals to get better. You should never just guess at a price for your art. You should actually have a process or follow a formula or something that you can easily explain to customers because sometimes they do ask and you want to be prepared. All right, creatives. So the take home here is that you want to find your personal pricing sweet spot that considers your tangible factors and your intangible factors. The invisible factors are the emotional energy you put into your art and the emotional reasons customers want your art. And you want to consider the visible factors like the market trends, your competitors' prices, how many years you've been painting, your reputation, the complexity of your art, the materials you use, how long it takes you to create your custom pet portraits. These are all factors that you should consider. And remember, there is a right price for your art. You don't want to go too high. You don't want to go too low. You want to find that sweet spot. Now, if you'd like to learn more about my pet portrait commission process, the exact pricing formula I use, and get the exact pet portrait commission contract, the template that I use that I'm going to give to my students in my new coming class that comes out on December 15th, I'll be adding it to my online animal art master class I talked about at the beginning of this video. And in that course, I'm going to go over everything I know about the Pet Portrait Commission process from start to finish. And this includes artists of all levels using all different kinds of mediums. All right, guys, if you have any questions or comments, leave that in the comments section down below. I'll be happy to answer your, your questions there or even add it to this series. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.